Well, hello, and welcome to this Sunday morning edition of Guitar Amado. Well, at least Sunday morning as I record this. You know, I'm not sure when I'll get around to editing. Anyway, I'm your host, Adam Amado, and these are my top three things that you will need to play guitar in a music theater pit orchestra. Here we go. Now, as I sit here on a Sunday morning after opening weekend, uh, just went through a very busy week, very long week known as Tech Week. So that's, you know, basically you just rehearse and iron out the details and everything and just get all the kinks worked out before opening night. Okay, so it's the week leading up to opening night. So in this case, opening night was Thursday. So we had Thursday, Friday, Saturday shows. So now as I sit here on this Sunday morning after opening weekend, kind of exhausted, running things through my mind, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, it happened again. (laughs) Now, I've done this for quite a while. You know, I've been doing this since 2013, I think was my first music theater gig. So just under a decade as I record this. And this will be my 15th show. This is American Idiot. It's uh, based on the Green Day album. It's actually a pretty cool show. At first, I was a little skeptical. Like, how the hell are they going to make a Broadway musical, like, develop a story out of this Green Day album? But they did a pretty good job on it. It's it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm a rocker at heart, so playing a bunch of Green Day songs. It's kind of uh, one of those dream gigs for a rock guitarist in music theater. They don't come along very often. But in my experience over this past 10 years, we'll call it, I have developed this love-hate relationship. So this is kind of the cycle I go through. Number one, I get asked to play the show. I'm super excited, like, heck yeah, man, I'll, I'll play that show. That's, that's awesome, awesome, awesome. And then it comes time to like meet up and get your music and sign the contracts and all that good stuff. Still in such a great mood, great mood. I got the music. I go home, start looking through it and reading through and getting familiar. And then usually within two or three days, I'm just like, why did I sign up for another one of these? This is so much work. And not to mention the huge time commitment. There's a lot of rehearsals that you have to be at. You have to give up your evenings. For example, you have to give up your entire week for tech week leading into opening night. Plus going through the entire weekend with the shows. And then we have to pick back up next Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four more shows next week, and then we're done. I don't know, it's this love-hate thing. It's worth it in the end, but is it worth the stress? So that's always something you got to consider too when you are thinking about jumping into this. It's definitely a way to make a little extra income, especially if you're in, you know, a, a mid-sized to bigger range city that has like a theater community. It doesn't necessarily have to be Broadway in New York. I mean, I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's a population, I'm not sure, maybe 3 to 500,000 people somewhere in there. Smaller city, right? But we still have a thriving theater community, so it's a lot of opportunities. But, you know, it's nothing I'm, like, making a living off of, right? This is definitely a side hustle. This is partly why I started this channel, is for guitarists who are at that level, who are finally thinking about jumping into, like, maybe joining a band or picking up some gigs in their city. But for me, it's more it's more about the experience. The, the extra income, yeah, that's always a, a plus. But the first few shows I did, I did not get paid for. It was volunteer work. And I saw it, I was still in college at the time, you know, studying classical guitar. You know, I saw it as an opportunity to expand my skills and learn more about following a conductor or just reading a score and staying in time with other musicians. But the bottom line here is if you are looking to start picking up gigs in any shape or form, Music theater is something you might want to consider. So if that happens to be you, let me go ahead and break down then my top three tips for things you need to know to be comfortable in a music theater pit orchestra. First and foremost, you have to be comfortable reading music. And the more formats you're familiar with and comfortable with, the better off you'll be. 
regardless of what you may come across, it's really this idea of interpretation versus like rote repetition of just what's written on the page. You know, you have to interpret the music in a way that makes sense to what the other musicians are playing, what the music director decides to cut or add to the score. You have to be able to just interpret the music. So a lot of people, when they first start playing, I was guilty of this too, is you think you have to play every single note that's written in the score. But really, it's more of like a suggestion. <laughs> and it just takes experience. It takes time to, to know when you can like push and pull and kind of add little things there. But in general, reading music is more about being able to quickly interpret what's on the page and maybe adapt it to your specific skill set. Could be I've come across things that are just like way too hard for me to play. Like I can't I physically cannot play that. In which case I have to come up with something that is within my skill set and that requires me to maybe change the guitar solo a little bit or whatever this difficult chunk is doing. Now number 2, rhythm and counting. Now, yes, you're right. This is directly related to what we just talked about with reading music, but it's worth emphasizing this part of it because ultimately what you're doing after you spend all that time familiarizing yourself with the score, making all the necessary changes and practicing so you can play all the parts, once you do that, the score becomes more of a roadmap. You're not actually reading the music the whole time. And in order to follow this roadmap, you have to count your ass off. And by that, I mean paying attention to the time signatures, so like 4-4. Four, four. You better be counting in groups of four and stay in track on what measure we're on in the score. Because at any moment, this is live theater. You know, maybe an actor drops a line or, you know, they skip an entire section of the song. Like, you got to be able to follow that roadmap and jump directly to that spot, you know. So rhythm and counting is very important because rhythm ultimately is what drives the song, you know. And you're in the pit orchestra. People are not there to hear the band. They're there to watch the actors. So rhythm becomes way more important than even hitting the right notes sometimes. <laughs> you know, if you can fake your way through some wrong notes and it doesn't sound too bad, but as long as you're locked in with that rhythm, that's the key. And finally, coming in at the number three spot. And by the way, these aren't in any particular order. They're all extremely important. But anyway, next on the list is gear. You better have the right gear for the job. And essentially, this breaks down into two categories. Number one is your tones. For example, I'm playing an American Idiot right now, and it's just straight up pretty much distortion and clean the whole time. You know, very simple. But on the total other end of the spectrum, I played this one show called Dogfight back in like 2018, I think. So I had to play, I think it was like five guitars, maybe four. I don't know. Let's, I'll find the picture. So yeah, it was, it was four guitars. But as you can see in the picture too, I had to run my own mixing board just to handle all of these different guitars. So I had my electric guitar that was going in through my actual multi-effects processor. You know, I play a Boss GT8. Been rocking that thing since 2006, and it's still going. So I had my electric going through that into the mixer board. And then I had various acoustic guitars. Uh, classical guitar for that nice warm finger-picking tone. And then two different acoustic steel strings that were in different tunings for different songs. But all of it had to be amplified and run through my mixer board. I was in control of my sound, and I was feeding a line off of my mixer board to the sound booth that was directing all of the other sounds. So you see, it got a little complex, but as long as you kind of make it a point to at least pay attention to gear stuff on a regular basis, you know, You'll, you'll start to come up with your own ideas for piecing together what you need for each individual gig. 
Okay. And that's really the, the point, you know, you don't want to just like copy somebody's tone, like maybe just to learn about it and study it. But ultimately that's what it all comes down to. Not just gear, but playing guitar in general, study this stuff so that you can learn from it. But ultimately it's about making your own decisions, play it your way. And that's the guitar Amado way. Basically, my advice would be just get out there and do it. Just take whatever gig you can. Play for free if you have to. Just get some experience under your belt. It's totally up to you. So anyway, I'm going to finish my coffee, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>